So now we'll be looking at factorizing polynomials. So how do we factorize polynomials? So now I'm going to start off by looking at quadratic factorization and I know that this should be familiar to most of you. So how do you factorize quadratic equations? So first and foremost, in factorizing quadratic equations, I'm going to just use two examples to show you the procedure. So the first thing you want to do is you want to write out the equation in descending order of x. So you can see that x squared first, they have x, they have this term without x. So the first thing you have to do is that you have to multiply the first term with the last term. So you have to multiply the first term with the last term. So when you multiply x squared by 14, you get 14x squared. So now this is where the part comes out. So you list something out now. And you now ask yourself, what two ways can I multiply 14x squared? In what ways can I x or what two numbers can I multiply to get 14x squared? And there are a lot. I can decide to multiply x and 14x. I can decide to multiply x, 2x and 7x. I can decide to multiply minus x and minus 14x. And finally, I can decide to multiply minus 2x and minus 7x. So when I multiply x times 14x, I'm, the goal is I want to make sure that x is in both of the quantities or terms I want to multiply. So when I multiply x by 14x, I have 14x. In fact, any of these pairs that I multiply, I'm going to get 14x squared. But the goal in this case is to choose a pair in which when you multiply them, you will get 14x squared. And when you add them together, you will get 9x. So let's try adding all these pairs together. So you have 15x, yeah, I have 9x, yeah, I have minus 15x, and yeah, I have minus 9x. So as you can see clearly, the pair that satisfies these two conditions is this pair here, 2x and 7x. So when I multiply 2x and 7x, I get 14x squared. And when I add them together, I get 19x, I get 9x. So what do I do? I replace the 9x by the pair that satisfies that condition. So I have now x squared then plus 2x plus 7x and this is straightforward because you can see that x squared plus 7x give me 9x then you have plus 14. So now you consider the first two terms and the last two terms separately so you try to factorize what is common to these two terms x is common and I left it towards x plus 2. Then what is common to these two terms 7 is common and I left it towards x plus 2 also. So when you're done factorizing, the quantity that in bracket or the factorize must be the same in both cases. So what do you do? You just pick one out of those two, x plus 2, and you take what is remaining, which is x, then plus 7, x plus 7. So when you factorize this, what do you get? You get x plus 2 and x plus 7. Let's look at another example. So in this case, now we are told to factorize this quadratic equation so what is the first thing that we see we have to do first we have to multiply the first and the last term so when we multiply minus 15a by 2a squared what do i get i get minus 30a squared so in what ways can i multiply to get minus 30 i can start out by trying to see a times 30 a times minus 30a or I can see minus a times 30a or I can see 6 times 5 so I have either 6a times minus 5a or minus 5a times 6a or I can have both 10 and 3 so I can have 3a and minus 10a or I can have minus 3a and 10a and you can list out as many as you want but now what do i do i try to sum them up so in this case this gives me what this gives me minus 29a this gives me what 29a this gives me a this gives me minus okay this gives me a oh sorry this is supposed to be a six and a five here so this gives me a why this gives me minus a 
and this gives me what a minus seven a and this gives me a plus seven a so what term satisfies this condition in which when i multiply both of them i get minus 30 a squared and when i sum them together i get seven a so as you can see it is this last pair here so when i multiply minus 3a and 10a together i get minus 30a squared and when i sum both of them together i get 7a so i replace 7a with these two pairs so i'm left to what 2a squared then minus 3a then plus 10a minus 15. so now what is common to these two terms what is common to these two terms is what is a and what am i left with i'm left with what 2a and what minus 3 and what is common to these two terms 5 is common and what am i left with i'm left with what 2a and what minus 3 so when i take i can see that they are equal so i just take one of it i have 2a minus 3 and i take what is left a plus 5. so when you factorize this this is what you get 2a minus 3 and a plus 5. so how about trinomial factorization so now talk about binomial where you have just x to the power of 2 and now i'm talking about trinomial factorization and where you have x to the power of 3 so you try to look for a factor using the remainder theorem then divide the trinomial by that factor then you factorize the quotient which is a quadratic equation so what do I mean by that? Let's look at this example where we are told to factorize this completely. So what is the first thing? We try to look for a factor with the use of the factor theorem. And now what does the factor theorem tell us? It tells us that if a number A is a factor of a, is a factor, that when you put that number A into the equation, it has to be equal to zero so we'll try it by saying let's assume x is equal to one is a factor so when we we'll try that we'll try to find f of one so we'll put one into this equation and what do we get we get one cube minus seven times one squared then plus 14 times one then minus eight and what would that give us we have one minus seven plus 14 minus 8 and what would that give us 1 plus 14 is what 15 minus 7 minus 8 is what minus 15 so 15 minus 15 is what 0 so now since we got 0 we know that 1 is one of the roots so we know that we won't bring 1 to this other side we have what x minus 1 equals to 0 so we know that x minus 1 is one of the factors of this equation here so now we can continue by trying to we can try out with 2 3 4 5 minus 1 minus 2 to find out other factors or alternatively we can try to divide this by this so we can have a quadratic equation as a quotient and what do i mean by that so let's try so now that we have found one of the factors we can divide the polynomial we have x is by 3 minus 7 x squared then plus 14 x minus 8 we can divide it by that factor that we have found which is x minus 1 so x cubed divided by x will give me what x squared so x squared times x will give me what x cubed and this time this will give me what minus x squared so i can minus when i minus now this cancel this so i'm left with what minus 7x squared minus minus will give me plus so i'm left with minus 6x squared then plus 14x then minus 8 then 6x squared divided by x will give me what minus 6x so i can write minus 6x so minus 6x times x will give me what minus 6x squared and minus 6x times minus 1 will give me what plus 6x so i can minus both of them so this minus 6x squared minus minus 6 plus plus 6x will give me 0 why 14x minus plus 2 give me minus minus 6x will give me what 8x so i'm left with 8x minus 8 so 8x divided by x is what 8 so i have plus 8 8 times x is what 8x minus x and what does that give me that gives me what minus sorry 8 times 1 is 8 and that gives me 0 so now i can see that when i divide this by this 
I get this. And if you remember, so that means that this expression here can be written as the product of what x minus 1 times what is here here, which is x squared minus 6x plus 8. Well, now this is a quadratic equation, so I can factorize it since I've learned how to do quadratic factorization. So let's try to factorize x squared minus 6x plus 8. So what do we do? Multiply the first and the last term first. And what does that give us? 8x squared. Now we'll think of two numbers in which I can multiply that will give me 8x squared. But when I add or subtract them, I'll get minus 6x. And I remember those numbers are minus 2x and minus 4x. So minus 2x times minus 4x will give me 8x squared. When minus 2x plus minus 4x will give me minus 6x. So you substitute. So you have x squared minus 2x minus 4x then plus 8. So what is common to these first two terms? You have x in the bracket, x minus 2. And what is common to these last two terms? You have minus 4. And what is left? x minus 2. So what you have here, you pick only one of these, which is x minus 2. And you write what is remaining, which is what? x minus 4. So I know that this can be simply factorized to these two terms. So now I just replace this by this. So when I factorize this term completely, what does it result in? It results in x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 4. So this is it. Or in other words, you can see that you can see that the roots or the zeros of the polynomial are one, two, and four. So now let's consider a concept called difference of two squares. So difference of two squares also give us a trick in which you can use to factorize expressions if they come in the form of x squared minus y squared. So if you have x squared minus y squared. Based on the difference of two squares, we can write that is equal to x plus y and x minus y. So let's look at a very simple example. So let me give an example. Let's say we have 9 minus 4. So now this is a very simple example to explain the concept. Definitely, I know that this is 5. Now, but let's use the difference of two squares. I know I can write three, 9 as well 3 squared and 4 as well 2 squared. So now, since this is in the form of x squared minus y squared, so now, it says the same thing as saying x plus y, which will be what? 3 plus 2 times x minus y, which will be what? 3 minus 2. And what would that give us? 3 plus 2 is 5. 3 minus 1 is what? 3 minus 2 is 1. And 5 times 1 is 5. So we can see that we obtained 5. But most times, we can see that the expressions might not be straightforward. So this when this law comes in, very handy. For instance, if I'm given an expression as x squared minus 9 and I want to factorize this, so what do I do? I first write it in this format. So this will be what x squared and I can write 9 as what minus 3 squared. So I now factorize using this expression. So that becomes x plus y. So I have x plus 3 and I have what x minus 3. So remember, the goal is to write the expression in the form of what x squared minus y squared. Then I can apply the difference of two squares. So let's look at some examples, two examples to be specific. So now we have 9x squared minus y squared. We are told to factorize this. So what is the first thing we have to do? Remember, first, we have to write it in the terms of x squared, a quantity squared minus another quantity squared. So now we can see that we have to write this as one quantity squared. So how can we deal with this? We know that 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. So we can write 3 squared x squared minus y squared. So now we know that we can write this as what? As a quantity that will be what? 3x always power what? squared minus y always squared. So now we have one quantity squared minus another quantity squared. So we can apply the difference of two squares, which says that that will be the first quantity plus the second quantity then multiply by the first quantity minus the second quantity since you have written it in this form so that will be equals to now what the first quantity is what 3x and the second quantity is what y multiply by what 3x minus y so now let's look at another example which looks 
quite complicated but really it's very simple so yeah we have 16 a raised power 4 minus 18 1 y raised power 4 remember our goal is to write this as a quantity squared and to write this also as a quantity squared so let's start out with 16 a raised power 4 now i can write 16 as 4 squared and i can write a raised power 4 as a squared a squared all raised to the power of 2 similarly i can write it 81 as 9 squared and i can write y as what y squared all squared so now i can combine these two terms together now and square them together based on my law of indices so this is the same as writing 4 a squared all raised to the power of 2 then minus this is the same thing as writing 9y squared all raised to the power of 2 so now i have it in the form i want a quantity squared minus another quantity squared so applying the difference of 2 squared this becomes what 4a squared plus 9y squared and the second term becomes what 4a squared minus 9y squared so this summarily is the basis you need to know how to do difference of two squares and basically we have covered the fundamentals of what you need to know to factorize polynomials and later in this section we are going to be examining some questions so that will be all for now